So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you an example of a, of a biological control project. This is the glassy wing sharpshooter. It's native to the southeastern United States, northeastern Mexico. It arrived here in California in the late 1980s. Didn't do much for a few years, and then suddenly its populations exploded. Maybe it went under, underwent some sort of evolution like Norm Elstrand has told us about. But when it took off, man, did it take off. And not only were the numbers of this insect spectacularly high, it was also spreading a disease which was killing plants. And that disease was particularly lethal against grapes, and it's known as Pierce's disease. So this is what happened with glassy wing sharpshooter. It's native to Florida, southeastern United States, and down here into the northeastern parts of Mexico. Late 1980s, it came into Southern California. It established, and then it spread. California then exported it to French Polynesia in 1999, and then in 2004, California exported it to Hawaii. French Polynesians then exported it to Easter Island in 2004 and to the Cook Islands in 2007. And wherever this insect went, the numbers of this insect blew up to densities of biblical proportions, like plagues that you would think that, you know, you'd read about in the Bible. These are the densities of those insects without natural enemies, and they suck juice from plants. And they suck juice at a rate of th three feet per second into their body. They are plugged into the water conducting tubes, and they're excreting water like this all the time. Non-stop, all the time. They ingest over 100 times their body weight in fluids per day. So with those densities that are on the trees, and that much excreta being released by those insects, this, is the si this was the situation in French Polynesia. This is insect pee raining out of the trees because there are so many insects feeding in there, and all the excreta is just raining down constantly, day after day, <laughs> week after week. We didn't pay her, not a paid actress. The trees couldn't handle this. They were dying. Fruit production was declining in these islands. And these people grow their own fruit. It's very expensive to import fruit into the Pacific Ocean, especially the French Polynesia. It's one of the most remote islands in the eastern part of those uh, stretch of islands that run through the center of the Pacific Ocean. So we had glassy wing sharpshooter here in California. They started emailing, man, man, dude, we've got a really bad problem here. We hear that you're working on the glassy wing sharpshooter with some biological control agents. Can you help us? I said, yeah, I think we can. I think we can. I think we can do something. So what we did was we took to French Polynesia this little parasitic wasp that we had been using here in California to control glassy wing sharpshooter. Just like the alien movie, this female lays her eggs inside the eggs of the glassy wing sharpshooter. And when those parasitoid larvae develop, they eat the glassy wing sharpshooter eggs. The parasite then pupates inside the host egg. And then when she's ready to emerge, she chews that little circular hole and she pops out like somebody crawling out of a manhole that you'd, excuse me, you'd see in the road. These are the circular holes after the parasites have come out. So we took those parasites to the Polynesian quarantine facility, not quite similar to what we have at Riverside. It was a, a storage container with a door on it. <laughs> so Christina and I went down there and we worked with Julie and we brought the parasites in and put them in these cages, gave them sharpshooter eggs, we'd just go outside and pick the leaves. There were no natural enemies attacking these sharpshooters. Nothing was eating them. They had a great climate, so much food, and no natural enemies. So it was no wonder their populations went crazy. So after one year in quarantine, doing all sorts of safety tests to demonstrate to the people of French Polynesia that California was not going to cause another wicked environmental problem for them, we received permission to release the parasite. It posed no undue risk to any other organisms in French Polynesia. This map shows you one island. This is Tahiti Iti, uh, Tahiti Nui, pardon me, big Tahiti, and this is Tahiti Iti, little Tahiti. These numbers are the numbers of sharpshooters we would click, would count on hibiscus in one minute. Huge numbers, 129, 300 something sharpshooters all around the islands. So up here, on May 2nd, 2005, we released the parasites that we took from California to Tahiti. Three months later, not much has happened. A little bit of a decrease here, but you can see around the islands, the numbers are still growing. 349 sharpshooters here, 163. Big numbers of sharpshooters. 
Five months later, the parasite is established and it's spreading. You can see the populations of sharpshooters are now starting to collapse. Seven months later, completely gone. There was no way you could achieve that with any other technology. Pesticides, cultural control, nothing. Within seven months, our research program that we developed here at UCR exported to Tahiti because we created a problem down there for them, solved it. And two years later, it hasn't bounced back. This is going to be a permanent situation for glassy winged sharpshooter in French Polynesia. Now, that insect will never come back to the densities that it, that it once uh, enjoyed. So, we were like rock stars. <laughs> it was all in the newspapers. People were so happy that we'd done this. Basically, this title here on this newspaper says, Bye Bye Pissing Fly. He was so happy that it had gone. So what's happened here in California? Well, we too apparently seem to have had a very good success with the same parasite against glassy wing sharpshooter. You can see over the last nine years that the numbers of glassy wing have collapsed by over 93%, probably because of that parasite attacking the eggs. Every two weeks we go out to the organic citrus and we count the glassy wing sharpshooter, measure the parasites out there, and these are the data that we've recorded. When we get to the 10-year mark, I'll have that magic data set that can go into a high-powered ecology journal, Dean Baldwin.